Konami presents a Hideo Kojima game. Alaska Bering Sea. A submarine. The nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound. They're demanding that the government turn over the remains of Big Boss and they say that if their demands are not met within 24 hours, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. You'll have two mission objectives. First, you're to rescue DARPA Chief Donald Anderson and the president of ArmsTech, Kenneth Baker. Both are being held as hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to make a nuclear strike stop them if they do. What's the insertion method? We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. And then we'll launch a one-man SDV. Swimmer delivery vehicle. After the SDV gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. High-tech Special Forces Unit Foxhound, your former unit, and one that I was a commander of. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho oh. Maz, with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, the beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus, master of disguise. Vulcan Raven, giant and shaman and Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound squad leader, Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake? The man <laughs> with the same code name as you. The nuclear weapons oh, the same. facility Wait, what? covers the whole island. I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your target. Anyone going with me? As usual, this is a one-man infiltration mission. Weapons and equipment, OSP. Yes. On site procurement. This is a top secret black op. Don't expect any official support. This is old and it's pixely, but you can already kind of see that Hideo Kojima definitely is a person who has some ideas about how to do cinematics and stuff. Hey everyone, it's Wellens and. Welcome to Metal Gear Solid 1! Damn, that was a really cool cutscene already! And if I if I looked it up right, this game came out in 1998, right? It already feels like it was pretty advanced for its age. I have no idea actually, but it feels that way. I feel like this series is one that people have brought to me periodically. Hey Wellens, are you gonna play Metal Gear? Are you gonna play Metal Gear? And I've always been interested. I haven't played any of them before, but I have played Death Stranding by Hideo Kojima. Which I thought was a pretty interesting game, so I've always been kind of interested to check out more of his work. But it never really worked out for me because access was a bit of an issue. Until the Master Collection came out last year. Unfortunately, when it first came out, I think it was quite buggy. So for the past few months, I've been keeping tabs on this game. People say it's, it's pretty good now, they've patched a lot of the big things and I think we're ready to dive in. I did peek around this, this, uh, this whole menu a little bit already before we started. And I think there is a bit more that we can see here for the, the cutscene stuff. Let's check it out. So we're like a spy, and we're going on um, a top secret mission to save the world, basically. It's been a long time, Snake. I should have known you were behind this, Colonel. Oh. That's no way to greet an old war buddy, Snake. What do you want from me? I just invited you here so we could have a talk. Invited? That's what you call sending armed soldiers after me? I'm sorry if they were a little rough with you. But we've got a serious situation here. Only you can get us out of it. I'm retired from Foxhound. 
You're not my commander anymore, and I don't have to take orders from you or anyone else. You oh. will take these orders. I know it. Excuse me. Who's this? Dr. Naomi Hunter. She's chief of Foxhound's medical staff and an expert in gene therapy. Are you military? No, civilian. I've been sent here from ATGC. Pleasure to meet you, Snake. Don't worry, this injection won't hurt a bit. What's oh, the God. shot for? What's wrong? You don't like shots? Snake, listen up. It all went down five hours ago. Heavily armed soldiers occupied Shadow Moses Island, a remote island off the coast of Alaska. What soldiers? Next generation special forces, led by members of Unit Foxhound. They've presented Washington with a single demand, and they say that Big if it boss's isn't met, body. they'll launch a nuclear weapon. A nuclear weapon? I'm afraid so. You see, the island is the site of a secret nuclear weapons disposal facility. Foxhound hijacking a nuclear weapon? Now you understand how serious the situation is. You'll have two mission objectives. First, you're to rescue the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, and the president of Arms Tech, Kenneth Baker. They're both being held as hostages. Those are some heavy-duty hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to launch a nuclear strike and stop them if they do. Any questions, Snake? Questions? I haven't even said whether I'd accept this mission. Didn't well, ask. You can make up your mind <laughs> after you hear more about the situation. I honestly feel like the presentation of this already, just based on the first cutscene and this this mission description here, is better than a lot of games that come out in 2024. It's not about the amount of pixels, it's about like the style and all that, huh? Okay, so I, I haven't played Metal Gear before, I don't really know much about its story, but because this is such a well-known and popular game, I feel like there are certain things I know about it already. I can probably recognize some characters' as names. Yeah, like, like, um, Liquid Snake, Solid Snake, Big Boss, all that. And maybe even some quotes, too. Like, a, a weapon to surpass Metal Gear or something something. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know the story, though. And from what I'm gathering here is that we're a spy. We used to work in a unit called Foxhound, where our commander was this colonel guy. But we quit, we retired or whatever, but then this guy brought us back because he's like, Hey, we have a new mission we gotta do now because your former comrades are now all terrorists and they're holding the planet hostage because if we don't do what they want us to do, they're gonna um, launch a nuclear strike. And the thing they want is apparently Big Boss's body. Okay. Alright. <laughs> okay. Operation Outline. Oh, this is basically what we... Maybe it's the beginning cutscene, but in more detail. How come I can't... Uh... Oh, okay. Infiltration method. Tell me about the nuclear weapon disposal facility. The disposal facility includes a hardened underground base. Even with our most advanced intelligence gathering equipment, we can't tell what's happening inside. So someone needs to penetrate, gather intelligence, and report back. Sounds like a spy movie. What's the insertion method? Well, an air insertion is impossible. Not with this storm going on. We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. Approach? Yes, within a few miles of it. The facility is equipped with sonar detection capabilities. They'd be able to hear our engine or propeller noise. And then? We'll launch a one-man SDV. Launch? Same as a torpedo, only this has no propulsion device of its own. After the SDV gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. You want me to swim in sub-zero Alaskan water? Don't worry. Why can't you do that it? That suit represents <laughs> the latest advances in polythermal technology. The nuclear weapons disposal facility covers the whole island. I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your target. Anyone going with me? Nope. As usual, this is a one-man infiltration mission. Weapons and equipment OSP? Yes. This is a top-secret black op. Don't expect any official support. 
This is basically the the extended version of what we saw in the beginning. Oh, but we get to see more. Okay, sure. Time limit. 24 hours. What's the time limit? 24 hours. They say they'll launch after 24 hours. Do they say what the target will be? So far, they haven't mentioned the target. When did the countdown start? Five hours ago. Oh, crap. <laughs> we don't even have 24 hours, are you kidding me? <laughs> 19 hours to save two people and figure out if they can actually launch something nuclear or is it just a bluff? Well, I, I'm hoping to God it's a bluff. Operation member. Person in charge of the operation. Camera free. Oh, it's moving around. Uh, who are you speaking for? Naturally, I'm representing the U.S. government. So who's in supervisory control of this operation? The President of the United States. Which means that the President <laughs> must be meeting with his top aides in the map room about now, huh? No, at this point they're still video conferencing with each other. If that's a real nuclear warhead, shouldn't they issue a COG? Not yet. The Secretary of Defense has operational control and is fully aware of the situation. After you infiltrate, if you determine they possess nuclear launch capabilities, a COG will be issued. Well, if they haven't relocated to the nuclear shelter under Mount Washington, I suppose there isn't that much reason to worry yet. Is the National Security Agency in on this? Yes. So is the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. The DIA? I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. They'll be sending us some support. We don't need desk jockeys. We need a nuclear weapons specialist. Of course. A nuclear weapons specialist has already been assigned to us. What is their name? Is that... Roy Campbell? No. Support crew. This seems like a massive thing then. And you're sending one person to do it. We need backup from a specialist. I'm just an amateur when it comes to nuclear weapons. I know. That's why I've requested the assistance of a military analyst named Nastasha Romanenko. She'll be provided with backup by Kodak. A female analyst? She's What's that supposed to mean? She's an impressive <laughs> record as an advisor for the nuclear emergency search team. Contact her if you have any questions. She's also an expert on high-tech weapons. Where's she working from? At her home in Los Angeles. California. <laughs> Seems like a million miles away. Hey, you gotta offer remote working opportunities these days to be a competitive company. They were flashing her profile on the screen there, something about losing her parents in Chernobyl, and then the freelance analyst writing for stuff now. Roy Campbell. Colonel, you're retired. Why are you involved in this? Because there aren't many people who know Foxhound as well as I do. Is that really the only reason? I've been soldiering for a long time. I don't know anything else. I guess even though I'm getting a little old, I still love to be in the field. Colonel, you're a lousy liar. Tell me the real reason. Okay, Snake. Sorry. I'll be frank. A person very dear to me is being held hostage. Who is it? One of the two? My niece, Meryl. Oh, there's a third person. Oh, it's not just those two people. There's other not as important people that it's not part of our mission to rescue, but it would be nice if we got her too. What was your niece doing here? Several soldiers were reported missing the day of the revolt. And my niece was one of those called in as an emergency replacement. She looks like you. She's my little brother's girl. 18. He died in the Gulf War, and since then I've been watching after her. A personal motive, Colonel. That's not very soldierly. I'm retired. I'm just an old man now. And I'm your friend. Since when are we friends? I've thought of us as friends since the fall of Zanzibar. With my personality, I don't have too many friends. That's what I trust about you. It's what makes you human. Please, Snake. Save my niece, Meryl. Alright. But I have two conditions. <laughs> Name them. 
One, no more secrets between us. I want complete disclosure at all times. And two, I'll only accept mm. orders directly from you, Colonel. No cutoffs involved, okay? Agreed. That's why I was called. But one thing. What? I'm not a colonel anymore. Just a retired old warhorse. I understand, Colonel. Just see, the her profile mentioned Meryl's profile. Oh, she doesn't have real combat experience, but she's done some simulation stuff and then received psychotherapy to not be attracted to the opposite sex. So to not let hormones guide her, I guess that's what it's trying to say. Although my reading of it in 2024 is, does that mean that she likes women? <laughs> uh, somehow I have doubts about that for a 1998 game, but uh, keep an open mind. <laughs> Dr. Naomi. That doctor, is she part of this operation too? She was in charge of Foxhound's gene therapy. She knows more about those men than anyone else. You mean you've seen them naked? Make no mistake, I'm not a nurse. I'm a scientist. By the way, what was that injection for? It's a combination of nanomachines and an anti-freezing peptide so that your blood and other bodily fluids don't freeze, even at sub-arctic temperatures. Nanomachines? Not just one kind, either. There are different types which will replenish the supply of adrenaline, nutrition, and sugar in your bloodstream. Uh, now I don't have to worry about food. I also put some nootropics in there. Say what? Nootropics. Nootropics. A class of drugs which will help improve your mental functioning. It'll make me smarter, huh? Anything else? Yes. Benzedrine. It's a type of stimulant. It'll keep you alert and responsive for 12 straight hours. That was quite a cocktail. Anything else in there? Those nanomachines will also keep your codex batteries charged up. Well, I guess I can call you when I'm ready to go on a diet. You're welcome. Don't need to worry about food. Making me smarter though? Am I not smart enough for you? All right. Oh, we got one more here. <gasps> There's so many. My god, we haven't even started playing yet. <laughs> I'm enjoying it though. I'm enjoying getting to know what the hell's happening here. But this is probably taking up some of our 19 hours that we have to rescue the two people and, you know, figure out the whole nuclear strike stuff. Hostages. The chief of DARPA and the president of an arms manufacturing company. What business did they have at a nuclear weapons disposal facility? The truth is that secret exercises were being conducted at the time the terrorist group attacked. Must be extremely important exercises if those two were directly involved. Were they testing some kind of new advanced weapon? I'm not privy to that information. Do we know exactly where they're being held? The DAPA chief has also been injected with a mini transmitter. As you get closer, you should be able to pick up his location on your radar. Oh, but to rescue a hostage, we have to find them and also make sure they don't die as we're trying to rescue them. Which is... It gets scarier the closer we get to them. Because then the bad guys might just be like, You know what? I'm not gonna let you have them. Kills them. So that's a bit of a worry for me. Nuclear weapons. Do they really have the ability to launch a nuclear missile? They say they do. They even gave us the serial number of the warhead they plan to use. Was the number confirmed? I'm afraid so. At the very oh. least, they've got their hands on a real nuclear warhead. Maybe they just used a key gen. Kind of safety device to prevent this type of terrorism? Yes. Every missile and warhead in our arsenal is equipped with a PAL, which uses a discreet detonation code. PAL. Permissive action link. The safety control system built into all nuclear weapon systems. But even so, we can't rest easy. Why not? Because the DARPA chief knows the detonation code. But even if they have a nuclear warhead, it must have been removed from its missile. All the missiles on these disposal sites are supposed to be dismantled. It's not that easy to get your hands on an ICBM. That used Intercontinental to be true. ballistic but since missile. the end of the Cold War, you can get anything if you have enough money and the right connections. So if we had any doubts about how dangerous this whole situation is, it's very. The terrorist's armament. How well armed are these terrorists? I know there was an exercise going on at the time they revolted. They're heavily armed, I'm afraid. 
What about their battle experience? The six members of Foxhound in charge are all hardened veterans. They're tough enough to eat nails and ask for seconds. We don't know them. I wouldn't expect anything less from Foxhound. The others I are thought next we worked generation together. special forces. They're not your average grunts either. Yeah, I, I thought because we came from the same unit that we worked together, but maybe they joined after I left. Their demands. So what exactly are they demanding? A person's remains. Remains? That's right. To be more accurate, cell specimens which contain the individual's genomic information. Cell specimens? Why would they want that? The terrorists need them. You see, or... these next generation special forces have been strengthened through gene therapy. Strengthened? You've heard of the Human Genome Project. They've been mapping the human genome, and they're nearly finished. Following up on this research, the military has been working towards identifying those genes which are responsible for making effective soldiers. There are genes that do that? Yes. And using gene therapy, they're able to transplant those genes into regular soldiers. Gene therapy? I'll explain this part. This is so new With age. With gene therapy, we can remove those genes which we know may lead to sickness or disease, and at the same time, splice in genes with beneficial effects, such as resistance to cancer, for example. In other words, we can overcome all sorts of genetic diseases, and at the same time, add genetic characteristics as desired. Okay. And so if you knew what genes were responsible for making the perfect soldier, you could implant them in the same way, right? Yes, we could. But it all depends on being able to isolate and identify those soldier genes. And in order to do that, it's helpful if you can study the genomic information of one of the greatest soldiers ever. This big boss? Do we know him? It doesn't sound like we know him though. Genetic strengthening. One of the greatest soldiers ever? The man they call the greatest warrior of the 20th century. You don't mean Big Boss. That's right. Everyone knows been him. Working He's famous. To identify the genes responsible for his incredible combat skill. So far, we've discovered about 60 of the so-called soldier genes. So his body was recovered after all. Yes. And his cells have remained frozen in a cryo chamber. His genomic information is a priceless treasure to mankind. Priceless to the military, perhaps. His body was burned severely, but it was possible to restore his DNA profile from just a single strand of his hair. You people are amazing. And then you're gonna transplant those genes into soldiers? Yes. We'll use a process that I discovered called gene targeting. The strongest soldiers don't become what they are by acquiring their skills through training or experience. We now know that hmm. hereditary factors are far more crucial for creating superior soldiers. Snake. Really? We can't give them his body. It's potentially more dangerous than all the nuclear warheads on that island put together. I hear the terrorists are calling themselves the Sons of Big Boss. The Sons of Big Boss? That sounds like they already have some gene therapy done and they, they're like, yeah, we're his sons. Huh. You guys want to do that? But the terrorists also want to do that. I feel like mm, nobody doing that might be the best thing here, but uh, we're on the side of the government or something, I guess. Next generation special force unit. Tell me about these next generation special forces. They started out as an anti-terrorist special ops unit, made up of former members of biochem units, technical escort units, and the nuclear emergency search team. Their purpose was to respond to threats involving next generation weapons of mass destruction, including NBC weapons. Until they were added, that is. Who's they? These guys didn't start out as regular army. Looks like a pretty international group. Mercenaries? Yeah, and it gets worse. Most of them were from a Merc agency that I think you're familiar with. They were part of Big Boss's private guard. And after Big Boss went down, the military just bought out all their contracts. Outer heaven. After that, they were merged with our own VR unit, Force 21, and retrained. If you ask me, these so-called Next Generation Special Forces should be called Simulated Soldiers. They have no real battle experience. 
video game players, huh? Ugh. Don't forget they've all been strengthened with gene therapy. They carry genes which make them excellent soldiers. Don't get careless just because they don't have much experience. I thought using genetically modified soldiers was prohibited by international law. Yes, but those are just declarations, not actual treaties. The interesting thing is that nearly every member of the unit conspired in this attack. They suddenly all decided to do this thing together. Okay, so the, the doctor guy was like, oh, having a perfect soldier, hereditary components are way more important. And then you have a whole bunch of, all of our enemies are genetically enhanced, at least in this special forces unit. But if I defeat them, isn't that proof that gene therapy isn't the best then? Because I don't have this gene therapy done on me, right? And you're begging me to come help you. I quit the Foxhound unit, and now you're begging for me to come back. Well, I don't know if I had gene therapy done or not. Maybe that's, that's a point of contention. It, it didn't sound like I knew anything about it, but these things don't have to have consent. <laughs> The reason for unanimous approval. How could an entire unit be subverted to rebellion? They're calling it a revolution. Since they all went through the same gene therapy, they probably felt closer than brothers. They see the unit as their only family. The son's a big boss. But if they were regular army, they must have been interviewed periodically by army counselors. According to their files, they all got straight A's on their psychological tests. They all seemed like fine, upstanding, patriotic soldiers. But they all took part in the uprising? No. Several people didn't show up on the day of the exercise. That's why there was a resupply of troops. Was there any sign recently that something might be wrong? There was a report a month ago that they were acting strangely. Apparently they consulted classified information about the soldier genes and performed their own gene therapy experiments. Mm. They can do that even without you? Well, our gene therapy process is almost completely automated. And besides that, they're all geniuses with IQs over 180. What? Even the existence <laughs> of this genome army is a national secret of the highest order. We've been hoping to investigate this thing quietly and deal with it behind closed doors. 180? Isn't Einstein like 160? You have a whole team of people who are over, over 180 in IQ. Not that that's even that great of a measure of anything, but it, it's something. Okay, we're, we're up against a bunch of really smart, really strong people who have nuclear warheads. And I have one person trying to infiltrate in this. Okay, I got you. Unit Foxhound. High Tech Special Forces Unit Foxhound. Your former unit, and one that I was a commander of. An elite group combining firepower and expertise. They're every bit as good as when I was commanding them. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mattis, with his powerful psychic abilities. Psychic? Sniper Wolf, the beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus, master of disguise. Vulcan Raven, giant and shaman. And Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation, and a formidable gunfighter. Looks like a lovely bunch of folks. Too bad we'll be meeting under these circumstances. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound squad leader, Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake? Yes. And you're the only person who can stand against him. Because the solid is better than Liquid. Why do we have the same name anyway? That seems kind of... The same... Last name? Same second part of code name? Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake. The man with the same code name as you. Tell me what you know. He fought in the Gulf War as a teenager. The youngest person in the SAS. His job was to track down and destroy British. mobile Scud missile launching platforms. You were there too, I believe. Didn't you infiltrate Western Iraq with a platoon of Green Berets? I was just a kid myself back then. Prisoner uh, of war in Iraq. But it seems that originally he penetrated the Middle East as a sleeper for the SIS. Fluent in seven he was languages. A spy for the British Secret Intelligence Service. But he never once showed his face in Century House. 
He was taken prisoner in Iraq, and after that there was no trace of him for several years. After you retired, he was rescued and became a member of Foxhound. I thought that by the time I left, they were no longer using code names. I don't know his real name. That information is so highly classified that even I can't look at it. Here's a photo of him. <gasps> Pretty shocking, huh? His skin tone is different, but otherwise we look alike. two are exact duplicates. Oh. I have a twin? I don't know the details, but it seems so. That's why we really need you for this mission. You're the only one who can beat him. Now that I've met you, I know. You've got something that he doesn't. I can see it in your eyes. Solidity. Why don't I find that thought more comforting? Okay. A twin or a clone? A genetic clone. Suddenly, all the gene therapy discussions are back on the table. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Wow, alright. And I don't even know this guy. Yeah, normally if you have a twin, you would know about it, right? So it might be some kind of a clone thing. Colonel, I don't work for the government anymore. Let me go back to Twin Lakes. Why, Snake? Is your life in Alaska all that great? There's a dog sled race this week. <laughs> Next Saturday, I have to be in Anchorage. I got hey, things to do. The longest sled race in the world? When did you become a dog musher? Right now, my 50 Huskies are my only family. I've got to take care of them. 50 Huskies? Don't worry about your dogs. What do you mean? I'm sorry, Snake, but this vessel is headed for the Bering Sea. There's no room for debate. I told you, even if I do owe you, I don't owe anything to this army or this country. You will accept this assignment. Why should I be stupid enough to do that? I'm no patriot. Snake, there's enough dirt in your file from your days as an agent to keep you in the stockade until you're a very old man. Oh, I see. Blackmail. No, Snake. I prefer to look at it as helping you come to a decision more easily. So blackmail? But anyway, I know you better than that. You take this assignment even without the threat. Why do you say that? You're a natural born soldier. You're not the grow old gracefully type. It's the same for all of us who've seen real action. The only place we can feel truly alive is on the battlefield. I'm a soldier too. I know those feelings of powerlessness, frustration that you feel every day. You've tried to play the Boy Scout out there in Alaska, but you can't race dogs in the snow forever. Why don't you come back to us and be a soldier again? Why did you I think leave? My life is some kind of a joke? Snake, I just want to give you back your purpose in life. Why did I even leave in the first place? Now I'm kind of curious. I need to borrow your scissors. What are you going to do? Don't worry, just gonna clean myself up a little. Huh? I don't want to be mistaken for the leader of the terrorists. Oh, that makes sense, because the... In some of the screenshots I've seen, I think... Us, we have short hair. Yeah, so now we can tell the difference. Cool. Okay, that was a freaking lot, but... <laughs> I think we actually have a little bit more if we're interested to really dig into every little bit of it. Previous operations in the special section. So my understanding is that Metal Gear Solid 1, and that's the beginning of the Metal Gear Solid series, but before then, there was still Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Which, I saw many people say it's okay to just skip to playing Metal Gear Solid 1, which is why we're here, but we can still find out what happened here by a brief summary. Metal Gear. The year, 1995, deep in South Africa, 200 kilometers north of Garsberg, Outer Heaven, an armed fortress nation established by the legendary mercenary who was feared in combat by both his friends and foes as a hero and lunatic. The Western nations have found out that a weapon of mass destruction that could rewrite war history is under development at Outer Heaven. They have called upon the high-tech special force unit Foxhound to take care of the situation. In response to this order, Big Boss, commander-in-chief of Foxhound, Oh, so he was a foxhound leader, too. Sent Grey Fox, the man with the code name Fox, which is given to the best member of the unit. Operation Intrude N313. Fox is the best person. Huh, and the foxhound, it's like everyone here is the best already. After a few days, 
his last message being, Metal Gear. Gray Fox is missing in action. Taking the situation seriously, the top men of the West again called for Foxhound. Big Boss elects Solid Snake, who has just recently joined Foxhound as the agent and entrusts everything to him. Successfully making a solo infiltration to Outer Heaven, Snake got in touch with the local Resistance members Schneider, Deanne, and Jennifer. <laughs> They're such normal names compared to mine. With their cooperation, Snake succeeds in rescuing Gray Fox. Gray Fox then laid out the terrifying facts about Metal Gear. Metal Gear was a development name of a nuclear warhead-equipped two-legged walking tank. It can walk through even the roughest terrains that would stop normal tanks. It can conduct a local warfare by itself with unique weapons like its Vulcan cannon and anti-tank missiles. It was indeed a new type of weapon that can conduct a nuclear attack against any place on the face of the Earth from any land surface. With Metal Gear, Outer Heaven was trying to establish its military superiority over the entire world. In order to destroy Metal Gear, Snake rescues Metal Gear's chief engineer, Dr. Petrovich, and his daughter, Ellen, who was taken hostage for her father to continue with his development. And here is from Dr. Petrovich on how to destroy Metal Gear. However, as Snake approaches the heart of Outer Heaven and Metal Gear, well-designed traps are set all around Snake, as if all his actions are being leaked to the enemy. In the midst of escalating battle, the leader of the Resistance, Schneider, falls into the hands of the enemy, and Snake himself gets injured through the deadly battles with Outer Heaven's best mercenaries. But Snake's indomitable spirit leads him to the 100th floor basement of the secret base where Metal Gear was developed, evading the powerful defense system that wipes out all intruders. Snake ultimately succeeds in destroying Metal Gear. Snake tries to escape from Outer Heaven upon completing the mission. However, during the escape, he was confronted by one man. Foxhound Commander-in-Chief Big Boss. Big Boss laughs at the astounded Snake and tells him of the truth of his mission. While serving as a Commander-in-Chief of Foxhound, Big Boss also ran a mercenary dispatch company utilizing his connections and capital from his years as a merc. He was planning on building this company a larger military establishment, and he built Outer Heaven as its base. Oh, wait, so he was the one- wait, so he's the bad guy? His purpose for sending the rookie snake to Outer Heaven was to cause information confusion against the West. However, Big Boss is miscalculated. He never thought that Snake would make it this far. Having lost Metal Gear, Big Boss activates the self-destruction system of the underground base. While the countdown to destruction continues, his scream echoes in the emptiness. You have gone too far. Too far! On the 100th floor basement, the battle between two men commences, free of ideology and politics. The armed fortress nation Outer Heaven collapsed. The impenetrable fortress, made from the best military technology and occupied by the toughest mercenaries, burned in flames. Behind him, the flames reached skyward as Outer Heaven fell, leaving Solid Snake all alone. Okay, so the Metal Gear is already destroyed. The Metal Gear in the Metal Gear Solid, which is a walking tank of nuclear badness. Okay. Huh. Ah, huh, the vibes? <laughs> the stuff they're talking about right now? Oh god, I don't remember the name of the game. A few years ago, I played a game on this channel, A First Look. It's, uh, it was published by Devolver Digital, and it was one where you were in a tank, and you were the president of the United States, going around in the tank, trying to destroy stuff. What was the name of that game? Metal Wolf Chaos! That's right. <laughs> kind of reminds me of, like, similar stuff happening. Oh yeah, some, like, spy explosions in the United States. <laughs> Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake 1999, the world was facing an energy crisis. It was obvious that the supply of petroleum would run up faster than expected. However, the development of an alternate energy source is far from completion. The price of petroleum has skyrocketed and the world economy is in confusion. The 21st century was expected to be one of chaos. One man's invention changed the entire situation. A Czech genius and biologist, Dr. Keo Marv, invented Oilix, a microorganism that refines petroleum to produce a highly purified form of petroleum. The world was filled with hope upon the discovery of this messiah to solve the energy crisis, but at the same time, the world entered a time of tension regarding this new algae. Just when the whole world's attention was drawn to Olix, Oilix and Dr. Marv, he gets abducted by someone and disappears. Nations begin investigations immediately, and a name soon appeared. Zanzibar Land. Zanzibar land was a democratic military regime that suddenly appeared in Central Asia in 1997. When their uprising took place, the CIS army formed around Russia sends a suppressive unit immediately. Zanzibar land resists by gathering a band of mercenaries from nations around the world and fortifying most of its land. 
As a result, the cis army was repeatedly defeated, and Zanzibar land declared its independence. Due to the active role mercenaries played, this war was called the Mercenary War, and Zanzibar land was referred to as an armed fortress nation. That sounds a lot like Outer Heaven. A military nation with a group of strong mercenaries surrounded by a tough fortress. According to the latest information, Zanzibar supposedly is armed with nuclear weapons. The whole scenario was crystal clear. By obtaining oil licks in addition to nuclear weapons, Zanzibar land was trying to establish its economic and military superiority over the entire world. Concerned about the situation, the United States orders Roy Campbell, oh, Commander-in-Chief of High Tech Special Forces Unit Foxhound. Oh, wait, is that the name of the guy that's been talking to me? I think so. To rescue Dr. Marv. Campbell was a former member of Foxhound. He brought back Solid Snake, the man who single-handedly brought down the armed fortress nation of Outer Heaven four years ago, and asked him to win back both Dr. Marv and Oilix. Successfully infiltrating Zanzibar land, and with the help of CIA agent Hori and others, Snake is able to go deep into the fortress and meet again with Dr. Petrovich, the chief engineer of Metal Gear at Outer Heaven. He too was abducted to Zanzibar land, and was forced to develop another Metal Gear. He tells the surprised Snake of an even more shocking fact. Big Boss. The man Snake had defeated at Outer Heaven turned out to be the general commander of Zanzibar land. What, he's the bad guy again? <laughs> Snake rescues Dr. Petrovich in cooperation with Natasha, Dr. Marv's guard, and former Czech international secret police agent, and then heads for the confinement facility deep in the fortress to save Dr. Marv. When Petrovich and Natasha cross a narrow suspension bridge over the deep valley, a missile blew the bridge away. Natasha flies into the air because of the explosion. While unable to do anything to save Natasha, Snake starts hearing a well-known voice. Hey, Snake! We are good buddies! I can let you go! Just leave this place at once! Grey Fox. Snake sees Grey Fox controlling Metal Gear, the best soldier in Foxhound who, after the fall of Outer Heaven, disappeared as if he followed... Big Boss! Losing Natasha in front of his eyes and letting Petrovich being taken away, Snake screams, Fox! I will not give up! After a series of deadly battles with mercenaries, Snake finally gets to Dr. Marv's confinement facility. However, when he arrives, he is too late. He sees Dr. Marv's corpse and Petrovich, who could do nothing but just stand there. Petrovich tells Snake that Dr. Marv cannot withstand the repeated tortures because of heart problems. Snake then receives an emergency call from Hori. The information she supplied was very shocking. Petrovich has been voluntarily visiting Zanzibar Island to develop Metal Gear. The abduction of Dr. Marv was conducted under the directions of Petrovich himself. After the truth comes out, Petrovich attacks Snake, but Snake easily puts an end to him and obtains the structural plan of Oilix. While trying to escape, Snake is confronted by Metal Gear again, controlled by Grey Fox. The tremendous battle takes place in the underground base, and Snake finally succeeds in destroying Metal Gear. However, Grey Fox does not submit and challenges Snake to the final battle. In the midst of a minefield, Snake and Fox fight without any weapons, a fist-to-fist -fist duel involving no hatred or murder intent. During that weird moment of purity, the two are bound in forces transcending words and emotion. Snake wins the tough but pure battle against Grey Fox. However, there still was someone else Snake had to fight, Big Boss. Just like four years ago at Outer Heaven, Big Boss was waiting for Snake. One who has experienced the tension of battle can never leave the battlefield. I am the one giving you something to live for, and that is war. Snake is infuriated at the arrogant Big Boss. There is only one battle I have to fight. To free myself from you. To shatter the nightmare. Big Boss, I will kill you. With a structural plan of Oilix, Snake and Hori escape from Zanzibar land on a rescue helicopter. Snake once again saves the world. However, there is no smile on his face. Big Boss's last words keep ringing in Snake's head. Whichever wins, our battle does not end. The loser is freed from the battlefield, but the winner must remain there and the survivor must live his life as a warrior until he dies. Snake then disappears into the white lands of Alaska, alone. With his 50 dogs? Hmm. Wait, so Snake is better than Big Boston, isn't he? Why aren't they trying to do gene therapy on Solid Snake? Why did they want Big Boss's corpse? Huh. Okay, I believe that's actually it for all the intro stuff then. I will see you in the actual part 1 video for us starting the game!